everybody, and welcome to the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where when people walk up and down the street, they look down. But we, when we walk up and down the street, we float. What does that mean? Absolutely nothing. I came up with it right there. Wasn't one of my best things I've ever done. I'm actually regretting it, thinking about cutting it out, but I'm kind of lazy, so I'll probably leave it in. So, today on this show, we're going to do something. (laughs) We're going to do something, guys. Trust me. There will be something to be done. Last night, I listened to the new episode of Poetry Says um, that Alice Allen does, Down Under. She brought up something really interesting that I think would be really, really good for us to talk about here. But if you have not listened to her show, um, Poetry Says, you should definitely give that a listen to. And know that it's very different than how we do things here. Not in Australia to America, but Poetry Says to I Hate Matt Wall. Because I feel like... A lot of the, I don't know how to say this, a lot of the problems that she's talking about, I think could be solved if you were a little more like me. (laughs) But then you would have much more problems, so you don't want to do it like that. So I'm going to try to come at this from a very outside perspective looking in instead of how I would just handle this situation. So anyway. So that is what we are going to be talking about today. But before we jump too hard on that, I want you guys to do the thing that I know you've been wanting to do for a while now, but for some reason keep putting it off. And that is to go ahead and give this podcast five stars. Just go do it. You want to. I want you to. We all want you to. You've been meaning to do it. You know, I understand life gets in the way sometimes. So how we're going to do this is you could just pause this right now or just continue to listen to me talk. And if you're on your phone, just scroll down a little bit and you'll see the ratings at the bottom. And you just put your fucking fat finger right on that and it'll take you somewhere else to where you can do the thing. You can do what's right. You can do what you know you want to do. And give this motherfucker five stars. And, you know, if you just don't know how to do that, or if you're just watching this on YouTube, just smash that thumb. Just pretend your fucking, your mouse is a fucking hammer, and that thumb is on the chopping block. And bring that fucker down on it. Yeah, we'll go with that analogy. That sounds good. Yeah, but more than anything, guys, more than anything... Tell your friends, like the lucky lady, tell a friend that you think who would enjoy this podcast. People have been doing it. It's been great. And and I appreciate it wholeheartedly. You guys are fucking awesome. You guys are the best. So, um, for those of you watching on the video feed, you are going to see my new chat book that comes out momentarily. And I'm not even gonna say what it's called because that'll just be for for people who are watching the video feed. Some of you might be saying, how do you watch the video feed? I didn't know there was a fucking video feed. There is, there is, there is. And all you have to do is if you go to my YouTube page, click the join button down below and you can come in for as little as $2.99 to be able to watch all of this and all of this doing all of this okay and if you are a big swinging dick you could sign up for the anarchy crew just saying and you get tons of shit with that tons of shit god anarchy crew rolls deep and rolls hard motherfuckers that's what i'm talking about yeah so since we're talking about all these fucking badass mamma jammas let's get into the fucking shout outs Shout outs. I know this is kind of annoying, guys, 
but fuck you. I'm going to do it any way I want because this is my show. So I want to give a big thank you to the good motherfuckers over at Patreon, Michael, Cedar, Harry, and then for all those in the crew and the Anarchy crew. No, let's just do the crew first. AM, you're amazing. Patrick, hugs and kisses. Alan, I love you. Thank you guys so much for making me, me, and you, you. This is fucking amazing. And now for the big swinging dicks over at the Anarchy Crew, who are what? Swinging for the fences and knocking balls over walls. Yeah. Want to give a big thank you to Bunny, to Nate, to Mindy, to Thomas, to Tim, to Lisa, to Josh, and to Jessica. You guys are fucking awesome. Thank you so much. And you know what we say over here. I hope I'm giving to you as much as you're giving to me. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And now on with this motherfucking show. Jesus, did you guys hear that? Fuck me, dude. All right, anyway. So where were we? Oh, yeah, we're talking about the show now. Good God. Good God, man. Good God, man. Here's the thing. If you, you, you what you might want to do, seriously, is stop this podcast and go listen to um, the newest Poetry Says episode. I think it's 201. Um, and hear Alice talk about what she's talking about. Because I feel like I'm going to be talking about certain bits of it, but I'm probably not going to hit all the points. But I think you can extrapolate what I'm saying to cover all those points. But I also don't want to put any words in Alice's mouth. I've already listened to the podcast twice and think I have a pretty good idea about how to do this without um, making it sound like I'm adding shit into someone else's mouth. But um, just in case. So here's the deal. Alice was talking about this fear that poets in Australia have, this weariness, this cautiousness, and how she was talking about it was she would go to like some sort of reading or a party or something and people are talking and there might be little bits of gossip here and there, but it's very quiet. And when you look at the eyes of everyone around the room, like you can see the weariness in their eyes. And why is this? And I think she was saying too that she doesn't really know if it's like fear of rejection or fear of like Twitter drama or anything like that. But it's just an interesting thing to think about. Like why do people feel that way? And I think in... From what I've gathered from Australia, I feel like it's a little different in Australia because I feel like the poetry scene where Alice is, is kind of like a small pond kind of thing, like big fish, small pond. Okay. And I do do not mean this in an insulting way because I think big fish, small pond is very important for a lot of people. It was important for me. I was a big fish in a small pond for a little bit and it fucking did wonders for me. But what I'm getting at is when you're in a community that's that small, you never know who your next editor is going to be. You never know who is going to be like the editor in charge of whatever magazine that's a big deal right now. Cause I mean, I've seen it where people with like absolutely no fucking talent whatsoever end up running something that controls the destinies of a lot of people fucking been there done that and like fucking bucks knows dude i have a fucking plan right now to take over the whole fucking world (laughs) so everyone better fucking be nice to me no i'm just kidding but um no like you never know you never know who is going to be that person and people are petty as shit So if you piss somebody off now, they will fucking hold a grudge and all that shit. And when you're in a small community, it makes it a hundred times worse 
because word travels fast when people start talking shit, you know? So I get that. But I also see that here um, in a different um, kind of way where the people here, and it's funny because Alice did bring up the academics in this. And from what I've seen is that the academics have no fucking problem talking shit on those who are not academics. And they also have no problem talking shit on other academics. But when they do that, they will censor it. If it's on a recording somewhere, there will be a beep. There will be some fucking thing because they're fucking not that brave. And, but they still think they're funny. You know what I'm saying? You know who I'm talking about. Everybody is too nice, but they're too nice to a fault because the only reason why no one ever really gets ahead is because no one is rocking the boat. No one is shaking the fucking tree. People like this is my place in this community and I am okay with that because I want to be nice to everybody. There are tons of. And Alice says this on her show, too. There are tons of very nice poetry podcasts. Okay? There are tons of really nice, like, people on BookTube and, like, people talking about poetry in magazines and shit like that. Unless there is a distinction. Unless the writer is like, well, I'm up here on the ladder, so I could probably get away with talking shit on someone down here. And that's okay. But the other thing you have to understand here is everything I've said, everything I've just talked about, there is a common thread with all of this. And what that is, is people putting their futures, their careers into the hands of others. The reason why people don't talk shit is because they want to get published here. The reason why they don't talk shit about this guy is because this guy's really popular and he knows so-and-so and so-and-so, and and I want to ask a favor from them later, so I'm not going to talk shit on that person. I'm not going to call this person out for what they really are because I'm trying to get this, this, and that from so-and-so because I need them in order for my career to move forward. That is the problem. And the way to circumvent this problem is by publishing your own shit to not be like dependent on these fucking things to not be dependent on the fucking teat of academia or the fucking traditional publishing industry, whether it's in Australia or America or England to not worry about that shit. Because here's the other thing, and I talk about this a lot. Poetry is very small-minded, meaning they do not want poetry to gain popularity. Because if it gains popularity and more people come into it, they will be shown as fucking frauds. Okay? But when there's a small group that they can fucking control out of fear, out of people being cautious, people being weary... They like that. Like, they don't care that poetry is going into the shitter. They don't care that fucking publishers and magazines are shutting down left, right, and center. They don't give a shit about any of this. Because their place is secure. But someone like me, who is like, I don't fucking like that whole fucking thing. This whole fucking machine is broken. I'm going to get as many new people into poetry as possible. That is how you grow. And if you are cultivating your own audience, you do not need the friends. You don't need the fucking like backpats from the other people in this fucking community. And then we come back to the main fucking thing. Like, are you a poet? Because you have to write poetry or else you will fucking die or are you a poet because you enjoy 
calling yourself a poet and being friends with other poets. But it's, it's basically true. If your whole thing is, I'm just friends with a lot of poets and we all write poetry and we're all friends and we go to readings together and this is great. Then yeah, you don't want to fucking shit where you eat, you know? But if you're looking to expand, if you're looking to grow, who fucking cares? And I know this sounds kind of harsh or whatever, but I've been on a fucking string of fucking harsh videos and harsh fucking podcasts and shit. So whatever. But my, my point is, is that the poetry community doesn't have to be nice because everyone knows all these people who are being nice pull the fucking knives out when no one's looking and they're only talking to one or two other people. And here's the thing. When they do only talk to one or two other people, those one or two other people, because the gossip is so juicy and we all know poets like to fucking gossip, they will fucking tell the next fucking poet. Oh my God, you won't believe what fucking so-and-so said about blippity blip blip blip. You know what I'm saying? So it's like we all know that this is happening anyway. So this nice facade is just that, a facade. It's bullshit. So why keep fucking acting like it's not like that? Like people give me shit a lot because I call motherfuckers out all the fucking time. And I fucking just say what I fucking think. Who fucking cares? Whatever I say about you is not going to keep you up at night. And if it does, you need to fucking balance your priorities better. Who the fuck am I to you? I'm fucking nobody. There is nothing I can do to change your everyday life. So fucking do whatever the fuck you want. Just like if people talk shit on me, bring it. I don't give a fuck. It's my fucking brand, dude. I hate mattwall.com. The I hate Matt Wall poetry podcast. I don't give a shit. I hate myself before you could even do it because I don't fucking care. It's not a big deal. And it would be great if fucking poets. And here's here's another thing. Let's fucking throw this into the fucking fire here. I, I might have talked about this before. I don't know if it was on the last podcast or not. I can't remember what podcast came out when. But um, Bucks over on Slee Ricketts. I wonder if he even like is bothered that I'm calling him Bucks. It's just confusing for me because his name's Matthew and my name's Matt. And I can't call him Mr. Smith. That just sounds weird. So whatever. And then um, if you listen to this last episode of Poetry Says, you'll hear of another poet with the name Buckley. So it's like we're fucked either way. So um, and I don't want to call him um, MBS you know, so we'll just call them bucks. All right. So for all of you um, world news people, you might have got a pop out of that one. But anyway, um, but he had an episode a little bit ago where he had the rapper Sky Zoo on. That's who it was, right? Yeah, yeah. And it was an amazing interview for the the one fucking reason that I hope it puts a fire under the asses of poets because the main difference in my view between poets and rappers is the humble and not so humble brag poets like if you remember when Bucks was on my show and he was talking about um, the dude who said I slept with your wife and all that shit Okay, good burn. Poets can and should fucking use their words to fucking cut motherfuckers. They do it all the time anyway, but like they use their words to cut motherfuckers emotionally. Like to make them feel, make them sad. That's all any of this shit is. Use your fucking words to cut a motherfucker. Do it. It's what we do. Brag about it. Brag about how fucking badass you are. Brag about how much fucking money you're making fucking hawk and fucking posy. You know what I'm saying? Why the fuck not? Why the fuck should anyone out there 
spend their fucking hard-earned money on your fucking poetry if you're not fucking ballsy enough to tell them that they should spend their money on your fucking poetry. Big swinging fucking dicks. You know what I'm saying? Bling that shit up. This shouldn't even fucking be a conversation. This should just be something known. But we are steeped in this ridiculous tradition that, um, I don't know. I don't know if it's that the 70s were so volatile and into the 80s that um, people just felt like the best way to move forward is to be the most humble and pacifistic fucking poet on the planet. I, I don't get it. I mean, if you're causing trouble to just cause trouble, people will see right through that. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're just talking shit on somebody to get clicks, people will know right away that whatever the fuck you're saying is bullshit. But if what you're saying has fucking meaning behind it, fucking do it. But this isn't so much of talking shit on others. I just want poets to have some fucking self-esteem. And, and not that fucking academic self-esteem where it's like, <laughs> I have won so many awards and da 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 Because you're still a broke ass eating hungry man dinners, okay? I want poets to fucking ball. Fucking swing big. And say, look here, motherfuckers. I'm the shit because I fucking am. And I know this because I have your money in my pocket. I know this because when I went to your mom's house last night to give her what for, there were a bunch of my books on her bookcase. Little shit like that. You know what I'm saying? And yes, I'm being crass. And yes, I'm a fucking asshole. That's not the point. Take the take the lesson here. You don't have to take the words I say to give it to you. Just take the fucking lesson. Poets are scared because they allow other people to control their destiny. And that's fucking bullshit. Take your own fucking life by the fucking balls and fucking do something with it. I can't imagine like constantly just like going, okay, well, it's up to all these other people to make me famous. Like I cannot even imagine for a minute like what that would do to anybody. Like Jesus fucking Christ, man. And maybe it's like the punk rock in me and the whole DIY fucking shit, but um I'm glad I fucking have that in me. That's all I'm going to say about it. I don't know. Just if when you when you take away control from the controllers, what are they? They're nothing. If a puppet master is doing his thing with a puppet but then the puppet doesn't have strings, what good is the puppet master? Nothing. These people are nothing if they do not have subjects to control. Like a king with no kingdom, is he really a king? You know, come on. We, we see where this is going. But as long as you continue to give others power over you, they will use that power. It's fucking human nature. Like there's no getting around that. But anyway, nice, nice, nice. It's got to stop. We need some fucking braggarts. We need some we need some true bards. That's a word everybody likes. The old bard. So anyway, so what are your thoughts on this? What do you think about this? Send me a little blippity blop over to I hate Matt Wall at gmail.com and in the subject line say response to episode blinkity blink or whatever episode this is or else I won't know what the fuck you're talking about. Um, 
Oh, and I've been getting some really great comments from you guys, and I think I'm going to do another episode. It's so funny. I did an episode where I was reading comments from everybody. And like a douchebag, instead of reading the comments from the podcast, I was reading comments from other videos I've done. Didn't even fucking put it together. So now I'm going to do comments strictly from the podcast. So the podcast listeners are like, oh, I understand what he's talking about right now. This makes sense. Fucking idiot. I'm sorry, guys. Let's go to the next topic. Oh, you guys want a writing prompt? Here's a writing prompt. Asleep on the sidewalk. Could be you. Could be somebody else that you've seen. Could be anything. Just what comes to your mind when I say asleep on the sidewalk? Write it. So let's talk about videos that I've done this week. Like some writing tips and shit. Let me see. So since the last time we talked, I've done videos about our Facebook groups worth it. Our writing groups worth it. And I actually did a fucking video right before this talking about lonely writers that I feel like anyone listening to this should go watch um, because I fucking it's an angry rant, um, but it's something that I think everybody needs to know. Um, I also talked about next year's um, poetry tour that I'm going to do. I'm going to be touring the America, reading poetry and showing motherfuckers how it's done. So if you are interested in having me come to your house, or at least your neck of the woods, um, and doing um, a night with me, let me know. And we will get us both on the stage reading the lines. Um, did another video about um, just a talk about publishing and how... I feel like a lot of self-published authors out there really focus on the author part and not the publisher part. And that's where everybody fucks up. So if you want to hear more about that, you could take a look at that. Um, and then I did a funny little thing about um, Google search histories, how we're all afraid of like um, triggering FBI watch lists and shit. Um, did a talk about pricing your art and your work how you should do that and what you should take into consideration when doing that. Um, I did a, a freak out bitch about a paper shortage that I don't know if it's real or not, but my um, paper costs have tripled in the last two weeks now. So that's fucking terrifying. I did a video on how to review a book of poetry. And then I did another video on, but is it even a poem? That fucking classic fucking humdinger fucking thing that assholes fucking say. And then to that I say, are you even a fucking person? Um, but yes. So you know how it goes. You know how we be. So anyway, so that is what's been going on over on the tubes. And now I think it's everyone's favorite part of the show. I think it's time for the butt plugs. Now, some of you might be saying, why do you call it that? Because a butt plug goes in your end. And these plugs that I'm about to do go at the end of the podcast. So, this is my butt plug for you. I promise that it will be not dry. Because I'm not a monster. Okay. So let's look at these plugs. Here we go. The first one, first and foremost, I don't know. Wait, no, this is going out tomorrow. So it'll go out on the 16th of November. The week of Thanksgiving, I'm going to be having a huge sale on my Etsy shop. Okay. And there will be a promo code. That promo code I will give you on Saturday's episode of the podcast. Okay. So you will hear it then. And basically, I don't know exactly how much it's going to be, but it's going to be significant discount code. But I'm also going to be instituting a thing. I have so much work now that's up on Etsy that every month I'm going to do like one thing that's really cheap, like compared to everything else on the shop. Sometimes it'll be a chapbook. Sometimes it'll be a broadside. Sometimes it'll be a zine. 
sometimes it'll be a piece of art because I'm going to start putting art prints up on there too. So you don't know what it's going to be, but it'll be there every month. And I will start this next week. So um, there will be something completely knocked down in price on top of um, the huge discounts you're going to get with the promo code. Also, I wanted to talk to you guys about my Patreon real quick. I have lowered all the prices for the tiers of my Patreon. So if you go on to my Patreon, there are um, three basic tiers. There is the Digital Plus tier, the Postcard Plus tier, and the Chapbook Plus tier. I'm probably going to be changing the names of these soon, but let me explain what you get. On the Digital Plus tier, you will get, I'm going to start just posting all of like my poetry and short stories, like exclusive shit on Patreon and in the email list. But when you're on the Patreon, you're also going to get digital downloads. So you are going to get songs, like cover songs I do and shit. You're going to get um, digital downloads of chapbooks. You're also going to get digital downloads of broadsides that you could print out and hang up and do whatever the fuck you want with. So there's all sorts of shit you're going to get like that. Now, if you hit the Postcard Plus tier, you're going to be getting something like this guy here. If you're watching the video, you'll see it. And for those of you who are watching the video, I know the problem we're having, and I'm going to talk to you guys about that individual, not individually, but I'm going to be doing a video just for you guys on that. So the postcard thing is, is a, it's a print of a piece of my art with a poem on the back signed and numbered. Okay. So you get that with all the other digital shit with the chapbook plus tier. It's kind of like a chapbook of the month club where, cause I put a chapbook out at least one every month. Last month I put out two. Okay. So you get that chapbook plus all the other PDF and digital shit and the postcard and bookmarks. If I have bookmarks left. Okay. So that's what you get on Patreon by signing up over there. Now with YouTube, YouTube, you could come in to just support me to show me how much you fucking love what I'm doing at like the bottom, I think is two ninety nine. dollars If you want to join the Anarchy Crew, it's $9.99. I'm going to be adding a chapbook of the month type tier to the YouTube membership thing but youtube takes a really big cut compared to what patreon takes so the price for what i'm talking about on youtube is going to be higher because the cut they take is fucking big okay so that's just that and that'll be coming up for another day um also if you want to do mentorship or if you want me to review your manuscript or anything like that you can go to IHateMattWall.com slash mentorship and read all about it there. And then just hit me up and let me know what you want to do. If you want to book a session, do whatever. Um, what can I say about that? Uh, I'll just leave that there for now. Um, Blood Rag 5 is out now. It's got some great motherfuckers on it. Let me tell you a little bit about it real quick. Um, I have poems in here from Joshua Edwards, Keith, Keith Phillips, myself, Nate Colton, Lisa Tuttle, Dimitri fucking Reyes, Matthew Buckley Smith, Jeff Taylor, and Shockey G. This thing is fucking amazing. And um, I'm sending out a bunch more of those tomorrow. So um, this is probably the... Um, most circulated copy of the blood rag. And I want you guys to know something. Seriously. If you get a copy of the blood rag, fucking make photocopies of it. Is that, is that still a thing? Photocopies? Inkjet laser copies. Make copies of it and post them wherever the fuck you want. Hand them out. Okay? This is to get the word out. It's a dollar in free shipping to order that from me. And that basically just covers envelope and postage for me. So this is just a way to get a bunch of people's stuff out there in the cheapest, most inexpensive way. I could put it up on a website, but you guys all know how getting your work published on a website is. People are like, oh, it's on a website. Scroll, 
You know what I'm saying? This is something they have to touch and hold and look at. Okay, it's a little bit different. So if you do get the blood rag, poets have all the rights to their own stuff. Okay, um, but this right here, if you want to make copies of it and plaster those around or hand them out at poetry events, or if you have a bookstore and you just want to have something that people could take with them when they leave, fucking print them out and do it. It's fucking fine by me. You have all the permission you need. Again, my chapbooks are on my Etsy shop. Um, this one that I'm not announcing yet um, will be up this week. Um, I have a bunch of books on Amazon too. Just take a look at those. If you're into the poetry thing, I got Fingering the Mundane and the End of Everything available on my Amazon store, along with the first two volumes of Poetic Anarchy. Volume 1 and Volume 2. And Volume 3 is coming out this month. So um, be prepared for that because that one's going to be a doozy. Horrywood up on Kindle Vela. If you are an aspiring filmmaker or you just like to um, read about train wrecks, um, definitely uh, go over and check out that serial. Um, again, my music, you can find it everywhere where streaming services do shit. My art, go onto my Instagram, you can look at it, and it will be going up for sale. Um, if you want to just buy a piece, you can just hit me up directly on that. Um, and then again, if you guys have any comments about anything that we've talked about here, or if you have something that you want to hear me talk about on here, or if you have like an article you want to debate or discuss, let me know. I'm down for all sorts of shit you want to be a guest i'm down and if you have hit me up to be a guest and you haven't heard from me it's just because i'm reading over all the shit that you sent me okay um some people don't send me anything and so i get to them a lot quicker than people who send me a bunch of stuff to go over um and also if you want me to teach a workshop to your writing group to your um, book club to your fucking poets corner whatever let me know. I have all sorts of stuff I could do. Just tell me what date and I will fucking make it happen. Okay? So, with all that said, keep buying my books. Type hard, everybody. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.